So here we are. You guys literally have spammed me for this video. So <laughs> I'm going to peer into peer pressure and I'm going to show you all about this video. Now, if you don't remember, well, remember that video just up there that I posted about a reptile rescue. We went out and rescued a reptile and the story behind it, but I never actually shown that animal on that video simply because I wanted, there was a lot of ifs and ands and buts that needed to be answered before I could say whether or not I could legally keep this animal or whether it had to be anaesthetized or sent back over to where it come from and stuff like that. But in that video, I went through, it, it was basically just a 10, I think 12 minute rant about how you shouldn't release reptiles into the wild. Definitely worth a watch. But the last 30 seconds of that video twisted the whole system around. We didn't get much information on it, so to speak. So we went out to pick up this animal that was found. We got a few pictures. If I um, can find a picture, I'll stick a picture of what it looks like now. But anyway, we got the call, go and pick this animal up. So we go out and we pick it up. Now I'm fuming because rep reptiles shouldn't be released into the wild, full stop. I mean, we all hear of the troubles they're having over in the Florida Everglades. And here in the UK, you just can't do it here because they just won't survive. Even our summers aren't hot enough for some of these animals. But anyway, I'm ranting on. Um, it's a bit story time for you. Woo. So we go out, pick up this animal. The last 30 seconds of that video has a twist. When we picked up the animal and we got it in, we realized this wasn't, or possibly wasn't, a released pet. This animal could have came over to England with a shipment of wood from South Asia. Um, because it was found, basically the workers opened up the lockers, boof, out it come. Uh, so it's come over in a shipment of wood from South Asia. And what do they do with it? All this sort of stuff. Can I keep it? Will it have parasites? All this sort of stuff. So my mind's racing around of, crap, what do I do now? If you didn't watch that video, it's definitely worth a watch. Go over and watch. I'll stick a card up here now, or is it up here? I don't know. And uh, you can go over and have a look at that. Pause this video, go and watch that. You know the score by now. But the animal, I'm gonna show it off in this video because he is an amazing species. I have such a character on him. But what's happened is we've got the animal, we've set it up at quarantine, and the whole quarantine story was a mind mash on its own. But the struggles we have, we had to realize what kind of enclosure it needed. We didn't actually know the specific species to start with. We had to send off loads of pictures to loads of different people, uh, some high-end university graduates and all this sort of stuff. And we got every one of them came back, boof, it is this species. So we're dead certain on that. Um, we had to figure out what was the best enclosure set up for it. Because if this animal has come out of the wild, if we, if we go in and put it into a sterile tub style container, then chances are that's going to stress it out even more and it's not going to eat. We need it to eat because that's the next struggle. It's been living off its own wild bugs and grubs and stuff in the wild. So we now have to transition this animal over to what we can actually get hold of in the UK. Let's face it, in South Asia, we can't get hold of some of their bugs, but we can get hold of ours. So we have to try and transition it over to that. Now, if it won't eat because it's in a sterile container, so we'll, we'll have to go into a more sort of naturalistic setup. But then you end up with the struggle of if it's got parasites, the parasites can thrive in that sort of environment. So we don't want to damage the animal even more if it has got parasites. So what do we do? These are all the questions that were racing through our minds at um, when we first got hold of this animal. So what we did, we aired on a bit of side of caution, a bit of not. We set up a quarantine enclosure. I'll take you over there now and show you it. So this is the enclosure we've set up for it. Loads of branches for it to drip on. We've got a couple of bottle drippers here uh, because this species doesn't drink out of just standing water. So we've got a, a bubble aerator in there as well. That blows some bubbles through the water. We've got the drippers there. One will drip into the water bowl. One will drip onto the plant so it has actually got a drink to drink. And we've just set up loads of sticks for it to climb on. We are going to do a lot more, but we wanted to make it so bare that we could actually still see the animal, check its interactions. It's got a plank there. It's just screwed into the side of the wall. With, behind it, is the thermostat probe. There's his tail just there. There's his light guard, because obviously he does need a temperature in this enclosure. Hot side cold side and so on like that so we got him back here we put him straight into that enclosure now the joy with that enclosure is uh, we've got the whole uvb setup in there 
we've got the heat basking bulb set up in there we set that extremely low because we weren't we knew where this animal had come from so we had a very good idea of the temperature to set it at but we weren't a hundred percent perfect um, so we set it slightly lower hoping to get the correct knowledge within the hour to set it up perfectly and that did happen we got the information back instantly and um, that's the joy of knowing a few people in the hobby sorry if you see me looking over there an awful lot that's where the actual enclosure is but um so yeah that was that we set them up in there for now um just as a quarantine setup we needed to keep a very close eye on him there's nowhere he can really hide too much there's a few little places where he can hide out to get away from everything get away from the uvb rays if he needs to and he's got a basking spot all this sort of stuff but the next challenge started when we needed to get a fecal sample because that's the most important part so far we needed a fecal sample off him to be able to send it away for the vets to check for parasites and anything like that ah, cup of tea so we did that anyway within the first 24 hours we had a fecal sample of him now we managed to get him now to this point we were still struggling to get any food into him he hadn't taken anything for us um so we don't know what was involved in that fecal sample but we sent it off anyway we went to the vets we sent it off they um come back again they were dead dead quick within 48 hours we had the results and this is what confused me a little bit because there was no parasites there was everything was perfectly fine now i would have assumed if this was a wild animal it would have had parasites but yet it come over with a shipment of wood and it didn't have anything wrong with it so um, that confused me a bit so me i second guessed it i thought no that can't be right but he was thriving perfectly well in this half bioactive sort of setup. So we sent off another faecal sample with a different vet. To my knowledge, it went off to the same actual laboratory to get checked, but came back perfect again. We double checked it. Everything was absolutely perfect. So we really struck lucky on that one. The animal struck lucky on that one. The only challenge we had now was to get him settled into captivity because if he is a wild animal he's used to going everywhere and this is an extremely quick lizard so it goes absolutely everywhere so we needed to get it adjusted to captivity how did we do that we just kept it in the enclosure we gave it what it needed we gave it the correct humidity level that it needed and the temperatures that it needed and we just basically fingers crossed hoped that we could adjust it to captivity we ran on the theory that it's going to be a handleable pet for us simply because the kids fell in love with him. They absolutely fell in love with him. Now, it wasn't me that first spotted this actual animal. It wasn't me that first initially rescued this animal. There's a guy called Mike Webster and uh, his amazing kids, they fell in love with him as well. So I'm going to be having him on this uh, channel quite a bit because they want to keep it updated on him and stuff like that. So um, for those kids and him, he's going to be around an awful lot. He's not normally with my reptile rescues. We get them in, we rehabilitate them up to their good health, and then we rehome them. This one's actually going to stay with us. It doesn't need any rehabilitation, it just needs adjustment. I've gone off on one again. <laughs> I keep doing that. But yeah, right, we needed to adjust it to captivity, which is what we've done. The next big thing is to adjust it to handling. If we want it to adjust all in one go, we're going to start handling it straight away. So, what we're doing is we finally got it to feed on. I think the first thing, thanks to JTB Reptiles for this little advice, he said try wax worms because they eat grubs in the wild. Perfect um, bit of advice there. So what we did, we got him out, we had a little handle of him. Just a little, he sat on our hand for a few seconds and then he jumped off and ran up the wall. Joy of textured wallpaper, he can just grip onto it and run straight up the wall. We got him back down again, put him back in the enclosure. We rewarded him with food. Bang, the wax worms, straight away he went down to uh, eat the wax worms. So we started breeding wax worms. If you want to know how to breed waxworms, I'll stick a card up in the top, as always. So we've done that. He got him to eat waxworms. Now, as we all know, waxworms are not a really good staple diet for any animal, really. They're just far too fatty. So we've gone down the line. We've finally got some food into him. So we kept him on that food source for about four days. Um, we're feeding him every day, if he'll take the food every day. And then we just slight, slowly started to alternate it. We ended up giving him a few superworms. He took them bonus tried him with crickets he ignored them tried him with locusts he ignored them tried him with wax moths bang he smashed every single wax moth he went absolutely crazy around this whole enclosure trying to find these wax moths but he did it but again they're not absolutely perfect 
So we kept him down to a superworm and a waxworm diet, and we're slowly transitioning him, transitioning him over to other insects, and it is working quite well for him. Um, let's go over and show you the actual species itself. This is normally where it gets entertaining. He'll eventually get onto my hand and then he'll only be there for a few seconds and then he'll jump off, run around the room, up the walls, behind the sofa. So uh, I'm gonna show you everything because this can get quite entertaining. FYI, we've named him Mooshu. Coming out, mate. Come on. See if I can get a good shot of him for you without this horrible light. There, guys, is an amazing Calot vers Versicolor. Perfect tail. It's got a plump little belly, so he's eating really well. Now, when we did get him, he had a scuff on his nose. And we've treated that with general first aid. That's all it needed. And it's doing absolutely perfect. But... A month ago, we couldn't do this. So this is absolutely amazing. You'll notice I'm holding my hand upright like this because that's how he feels more comfortable. These are absolutely an amazing lizard. Some call them, or they are nicknamed in the hobby as blood suckers because they get really bright red throats, sometimes even purpley legs. And that's just what the males do in breeding season. This is a proven male. I have sexed him as a male, but he's absolutely stunning. There's Mooshu guys, a Calot Versicolor. We don't know what we're going to do with him, if we've got any plans for him, whether he's going to stay as a pet or what. But he is absolutely amazing. He is highly, highly loved by all of us, including the kids. And we had to check with him whether we could keep him with him being a wild animal. So we sent off all the pictures and stuff and they all come back. Uh, with a few questions of can you get a close-up of this face, can you get a close-up of this arm, his horn, all this sorts of stuff. Look at, look at that crest. Oh, see how he gets nervous when I get a bit closer to him. And yeah, so they've come back and they've said because this is not a threatened species in its home native country, then it's perfectly okay to keep it as a pet. I have had to register it as a um, illegally imported pet, but... There's nothing wrong with that. It's a case of I've got an illegally imported pet because he didn't have any papers when he come over here with. He's absolutely so jumpy as well. Let's try and level him out. Check out the crest on his head. I'll try and get a close up, but I don't know if it'll focus. As long as we're slow and gentle, he's, this is the best he's ever sat, so he must love the camera. Either that or he can see himself on the camera. Normally he's jumped off and he's all over the actual wallpaper by now. Absolutely amazing creature. For a while he's staying here quite happily, I'm going to quite happily um, show you guys because he is absolutely stunning. Yeah, we had to check if we could keep him and it turns out we can keep him because he's not a threatened animal. But it is licensed. we've had to get some licensing and some paperwork for him. But he's absolutely stunning. We honestly still to this day do not know if he is a rescue a released pet or whether he is has come over with a container ship of wood but either way all, all it all points to he's come over in the container ship because that's where he was found but and this is the big book no parasites makes me think maybe he was a pet and it's, I don't know we're just treating him as a wild animal you're nice and calm today dude I can't wait till breeding season comes round because to really show you guys what colours he gets. But there is Mushu. Uh, Calots Versicolor. So I think they're called Oriental Garden Lizards. They're not a sought after animal. They're not a high, high in demand animal. They're not even... They're, they're, I think they're more of a pest in their country to be fair. They're just seen wandering around all over the place. But I've never seen one actually in person in the UK I'll put some pictures up now this is him you can see him just there I'll put him a bit closer right next to him if I can find the picture of when he was first found I'll stick that next to it so you can see it aren't they absolutely amazing but let's go and put him back 
Nice and gentle, nice and... There we go. Right, so he's jumped off. Fannying around somewhere. There he is, on top of the plugs. <laughs> so let's get him out. Okay, right the way down there on the wires. So Are you coming out, Ocean? Where you at? Where are you, mate? Come on, dude. Are you coming out? And oh, the games begin. Come on, dude. And now he's gone behind the sofa. Where are you, mate? There he is. Come on, dude. See, now... One thing we don't want to do is grab him, because we're trying to build a trust and a bond up with him. Oh, there he is. Oh. Right, put you down for a second. Got him. Nice and gentle. There he is, he's on my arm, just there. Let's put him back in. Let's get some close-ups of him. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you want to see an update on him all the time, please hit the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it.